Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to very nice, very educational miniature from 1912. The game was uh, held in St. Petersburg and uh, let me introduce the players. Alexander Aliyehin, the future world champion. However, here he is only 19 years old, so a rising star uh, of the Russian chess. And he already was very strong because his estimated ranking according to chess metrics was already 2669 and he's gonna play as white and his opponent may be less known but also a very strong player uh, Grigory Levenfish and uh, he was known because uh, he contributed to the chess theory a lot uh, for example we have Levenfish attack in the Sicilian defense also he wrote the uh, the books about the opening theory, also famous book about the rook endings uh, theory. And uh, he managed to beat Emmanuel Laskell, the world champion, also Alexander Aliehin. And just one year later, after this game, uh, he, he won with Alexander Aliehin in very nice miniature. And he became very strong in 30s, so uh, much later than this game. Uh, he was, for example, uh, the Russian champion, national champion twice. And, for example, the future world champion Mikhail Bot Finik couldn't win with Levenfish, so definitely that's some achievement. And without further ado, let's see what happened in the board. So Alexander Aliyehin opened with d4. We have c5, d5, knight on f6, so some kind of Benoni systems. And I would like to show you uh, j just the, some ideas how it looked like uh, in this position. So uh, c4, e6 and uh, knight on c3 exchanging the pawns on d5. This is very typical. d6, e4, g6. And this is very, you know, a normal, typical position in the Benoni systems where black actually have the plan to attack on the queen side because they have the three pawns against only two pawns and white want to break the center so play something like f4 e5 and of course with the support of the pieces uh, breakthrough in the center so these are the very typical plans however here in this position uh, Alexander Aliyehin play knight on c3 so he developed the pieces much faster and he want to go for e4 f4 and then e5 and break through the center so uh, that's the plan we have d6 by 11 fish and now e4 as planned and g6 and if actually in this position Blackwood would like to undermine the center of white for example e6 not really comfortable because bishop on b5 is always a very important move in the in the benoni so uh, you will see some ideas here so for example bishop on d7 uh, as the move and now d takes on e6 and now this bishop of course can't take it so uh, f takes on e6 and now e5 attacking the knight attacking this pawn and black structure pawn structure gonna be ruined so what black would have to play is d on e5 and this central pawns very very nice uh, target for the white and probably uh, white gonna have very comfortable game of course it's playable for both sides and was played a couple of times uh, however, g6 looks more uh, logical, of course. Uh, we have f4 by Aliehin, and here black already should be should be very precise. So they should play something like bishop on g7, and after bishop on b5, which was played many times, even in 21st century, then knight f on d7. Very important move. So don't bring this knight, but rather knight f on d7. And now e5 is controlled, you know, uh, more times. So e5, it's not so easy to push right now. So white have to, you know, still prepare it. Uh, however, here we have knight b on d7 by Levenfish. Not really precise move. We have knight on f3. And now if black now play bishop on g7, what would happen is e5. Uh, so knight, for example, on g4 and then e6. This is one of the ideas uh, to play against the Benoni. And now f takes on e6, d takes on e6 and knight d on f6. And after bishop on b5, 
uh, the king actually have to move to f8 and white gonna have very comfortable game uh, better development of course this pawn uh, is the pain uh, for black not easy to develop the king is already you know impossible to castle the rook's gonna stay very uncomfortable game for black Levenfish uh, definitely don't enjoy this continuation, so he play a6, preventing the bishop from jumping to b5, but also in the future uh, b5 can be played, as this is already prepared. Uh, and of course, Alejin e5, very dip typical move here uh, in the Benoni. We have d takes on e5, f takes on e5, knight g4, and now e6. Uh, this is very well known idea and it's not easy to deal with that. Uh, for example, f takes on e6, which looks like the strongest move, and d on e6, knight b6, and the pawn is under attack. Uh, white actually can keep some good pressure. Queen on d8, king on d8, now knight on g5, so king on e8, and now bishop e2 attacking the knight. Knight would have to retreat and white actually can just castle and after h6 for example knight f7 rook h7 and now bishop f3 keeping an eye on b7 and if black want to you know uh, eliminate this pawn on e6 which is of course possible knight e5 with the tempo on g5 also this pawn is under attack and white gonna get the back the pawn um, so, for example, on g5, bishop on b7, and the game can continue, but white definitely stands better. So, as you see, it's not so easy to deal with this advanced pawn, and they are really, really annoying. What Levenfish play is knight d on e5, okay? So, uh, moving the knight to the center, and here Aliehin could play, he didn't play that, but after h3 he could get very very strong position. Now if the knight is moved, then this knight is under attack, is hanging, uh, so knight on f3 first, now queen on f3, the, the knight is still under attack, knight on e5 with tempo, queen g3, now bishop on g7 defending the knight, uh, bishop f4 and black would have to play some ugly moves like f6, and then after castle, white have phenomenal position. This position just play itself, okay? It's very difficult to find the plan for black, actually. Uh, but Aliehin play just developing move. So bishop on f4 first. And now knight on f3 as the knight is attacked twice. Uh, and here queen on f3 is possible. It's probably even stronger and more natural move. However, after f takes on e6, d takes on e6, black can eliminate this e6 pawn. So maybe Aliehin didn't like it. So after h3, let's say knight on f6, queen on b7, and position is again is, is much better for white, but uh, Aliehin didn't like to, you know, uh, get these pawns eliminated. So he play g takes on f3 and now this knight is under attack so have to be moved knight on f6 and here Aliyahin just developed the piece so bishop on c4 but also supporting this pawn so if they are exchanged uh, then the pawn on e6 gonna have some support and black can't play b5 it looks like you know the trap but actually the problem is knight on b5 okay and now uh white gonna get back the material because this pawn is you know uh keeping an eye on d7 so that would be devastating for black of course so this is why 11 fish here play f takes on e6 d takes on e6 and queen on b6 now we have double attack on b2 it's already uh, undefended but also on e6 okay because it's attacked twice and there is only one defender so what would white play in this position what do you think what would you play in this position so uh, alehin play queen on e2 definitely the best move in the position defending e6 uh, and now if black plays something like bishop on g7 and then castle then b2 is no longer hanging so a bad black can also castle and the game can continue here uh, from this position and white have some advantage of course but this is still playable uh, but what levenfish play 
and he calculated quite precisely and he played queen on b2 and most of the lines win for black are better for black here but feel free to pause the video now and find the only winning combination for white while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready <clears throat> so the only move and it's very typical in in this uh, kind of structures is knight on b5 knight on b5 and it's quite difficult to find this move but it's just it's just winning so now the knight can be taken because a takes on b5 we have bishop on b5 and with this pawn on e6 black can do nothing so uh if the kings move on d8 then of course we have the rook d1 and that's gonna be devastating here so bishop on d7 black have to give back the material and now e takes on d7 and whatever black play like knight on d7 the problem is bishop on e5 now attacking the queen defending the rook and also attacking this rook so queen on b4 with tempo would be the best here king f1 and now black don't have really good moves rook is hanging so rook g8 but then rook d1 now the knight is hanging so rook d8 bishop c7 and black is losing black don't have moves so bishop on g7 bishop d8 and white of course is winning so uh, not this way but also if play something like king on d8 it also doesn't work this time bishop on e8 in the same fashion okay defending the rook and attacking the queen queen b4 but now c3 is very strong uh, queen e5 and now simply rook d1 and just developing white developing black don't have good moves so for example bishop on g7 if also want to develop but now simply castle rook on f8 also developing rook f on e1 and now preparing this battery uh, to attack and black if black want to you know defend then queen c4 attacking the rook rook has to uh, move back now queen on c5 again attacking e7 rook can go back and now bishop on g3 putting even more pressure here and if white want to play quite natural looking move knight on g8 then it's another problem rook on e4 with the plan rook c4 and now some mating ideas on c8 so as you see knight on b5 can't be taken with the pawn a uh, very bright idea and this is probably the move which Levenfish just missed uh, in his calculation because all other moves just losing and black would have very comfortable game uh, so here Levenfish take the rook on a1 we have a king on f2 and now rook h1 so sacrificing two rooks and now rooks can't come to d1 and you know continue the attack on the king the problem is the rooks are not needed white still have the queen so uh, it's still only one continuation but it's not difficult to spot this time knight on c7 this is what aliyahin of course play king on d8 queen on d2 and now the only move for black is bishop on d7 uh, and now e takes on d7 and in this position grigory levenfish resigned the game and he resigned the game because he can do nothing this is the checkmate coming so how are you gonna prevent this checkmate uh, the only thing probably you can do is uh, sacrificing the queen throwing some material or playing something like knight on d7 and then trying to escape with the king connect the rooks and with the you know advantage of the rooks maybe try to win the problem is bishop on e6 checkmate is coming uh what black can do is only queen on c8 but now we have a check queen on b8 and now everybody can probably see that knight on b5 checkmate this is a discovered check and also this knight controls a7 and so that would be a checkmate this is why in this position uh, Grigory Levenfish resigned the game very beautiful miniature very nice attacking uh, ideas and also I hope you remember a bit from Benoni 
and uh, how to beat Benoni. Uh, if you have similar positions, what are the ideas, how to fight in the center, how to break the center, and maybe, if you are lucky, attack the king in the center, which is not, uh, you know, castled. So I hope you like this miniature, and if you don't want to miss any other we are planning to post, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.